Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us this evening at the Noman School of Visual Effects, Games, and Animation for the first in a new series of events, which we've dubbed Squash and Stretch. So we think we're really cool. We're probably not that cool, uh, but it is going to be a lot of fun. Um, so tonight's event will be covering fundamentals for animators and storytellers, kicking off with Francis Glebus in just a moment, who will be sharing with us the magic of storytelling. Uh, Francis is a storyboard artist best known for his work on The Lion King at Disney, so it's a real honor for us to have Francis here tonight. He's also the instructor at Noman School for one of our storyboarding classes, so extra special thanks for helping so many of our students too. Um, Francis's inspiring talk will put us in a fantastic frame of mind for the second part of today's event when we'll get some awesome lessons in improv and acting for animators and storytellers. Uh, the workshop will be led by the Emmy Award-winning animator, Laura Barbara, and I know she hates it when I say that, <laughs> who's animated everything from the lead boy in the Polar Express to the world of Warcraft Orc in the Mountain Dew commercial, so super cool. Uh, Laura teaches several animation classes here at Noman, uh, so again, we're super lucky to have her here with us tonight for this special event, and her workshop's gonna be a lot of fun, and we have a ton of student volunteers over here <laughs> waiting to get started. So uh, so we're streaming live from Hollywood tonight. So hello to everyone watching on live stream and Facebook. Uh, we'll be streaming the first two parts of today's event. And then for those in the stage who want to try out some improv, improv and acting exercises, we'll close down the live stream around 9.30. Uh, and then the final half hour will be dedicated to you guys in the stage and no cameras, I promise. Um, we have cool prizes today too. So Francis has kindly brought and signed three books that he's authored, which are really beautiful and informative. So uh, hang on to your raffle tickets if you're here in the stage. We'll select winners at 9.30. Uh, we also have some great posters that Francis is raffling too, which I'm not gonna show you because it'll ruin all the fun, uh, but they're super cute and you definitely want one. So we'll raffle those as well. Um, Laura Barbara is also being super awesome and offering um, a Skype portfolio review to a lucky stage attendee today. So she has over 20 years of experience in the entertainment industry, spanning character animation, previous animation direction. So it's a really great opportunity. So again, the winner will be revealed at 9.30. Um, for online viewers, we have a one month subscription to the Noman Workshop Training Library. Um, to enter that, simply share tonight's live stream event URL on Twitter using hashtag Noman and we'll select a winner. Um, at random at the end of tonight's event. And if you're watching on Facebook Live, to find the event URL, um, head to livestream.com forward slash Noman, and it's right there. Um, if either of tonight's presenters ask you, uh, sorry, invite you to ask questions, please raise your hand and we'll bring the mic to you. Uh, just be sure to wait for the mic before you begin your question, please. Um, before we start, I'd like to thank our event sponsor, Lenovo, uh, for helping us to bring these free events to you. Our students use Lenovo workstations here on campus, so a huge thanks goes out to them for their event support. Um, and for those here on the stage, we have a special 20% discount for all ThinkPad P-Series and ThinkStation products on Lenovo.com, and that offer's been running for a month, so it's good through to September 30th, um, and it's literally exclusive to you guys. So. Um, if you didn't get a card when you checked in, uh, just let us know. Um, so tonight's the last night that we'll be giving out that code as well. So I've talked too much as usual. I'm so sorry. Um, let's have a big round of applause and we'll hand over to Francis to get started. Thank you very much. Welcome, everybody. Um, Stretch and squash, that reminds me of my first job interview. I was proud, I wanted to become an animator and stuff, and, it's like, and I referred to it as squish and squash. Um, and I got a job painting cells on the night crew. So that's how I started. Um, hope, dreams, and terror. What else goes with that? Oh, hopes, dreams, and terror. Um, <clears throat> stories have been around a very, very long time. Um, I saw some, a number of films when I was very little, and I got into animation to work out traumas from watching Snow White when I was about five years old. <clears throat> Still working it out. Um, I thought, I'm, I'm a very visual person, so I thought I'd give you a kind of overview of, of my talk. We're gonna start out in the beginning there with Snow White, 
We're going to go through uh, the, ta the, the, um, the chasm of Dead Men Don't Tell No Tales, a little bit of uh, Romeo and Juliet, Where the Dragons Why, and come to some buried treasure where you'll get your wishes all filled. <clears throat> what happens when we wish? We all want to know what happens when we wish. Walt Disney knew this very well. I'm wishing for the one I love, when you wish upon a star, uh, a dream is a wish your heart makes. Meanwhile, he also knew that we needed hope. <clears throat> hope plus fear needed terror. Walt was great at creating horrifying, terrible uh, villains like Monster the Whale and even more evil, Stromboli <clears throat> and the evil stepmother in Cinderella. So, I got my wish fulfilled and I got to work at the happiest place on earth. And I started on Aladdin and I started out in visual development and it was our job to create images for the film. What would the genie look like? So these are some early versions of my exploration of what a genie might look like. I thought maybe it's an Elvis impersonator. And then I also drew um, uh, uh, Jasmine, maybe a little bit of an Indian influence. Um, and we also did gags, like, <clears throat> you know, surfing on uh, magic carpet rides, that kind of thing. Uh, and it was really fun, and the directors really liked what I was doing. And here's even one of the villains. And then came the terror. It was time to pitch my first sequence. And it was like, stab me with a knife in the heart. I pitched a sequence of Aladdin trying to steal the fruit. And I didn't know anything about screen direction. And this sequence needed really complicated staging. And I presented it. And I'm backtracking when I'm pitching. And I'm saying, oh, well, I forgot about this here. And I'd never pitched before. And it was a nightmare. And I remember John Musker turning to Ron Clements and going, well, I don't know if Francis can board. I was like, oh. Anyway, they put me back in doing visual development. And I started exploring this sequence, and I'm putting together up on big cork boards. We used to use four by eight cork boards with actual pencils and paper back then. And I put up a sequence, so I'm starting to see the pieces are connecting. So I presented it as a storyboard, as a, a finished sequence. I added a few extra drawings to flesh it out. And the happiest place on earth turned around for me. It became a whole new world. <clears throat> Jasmine is attending her birds, and Aladdin shows up again. She's already rejected him. And he goes, well, you know, I know what it's like to be cooped up in the palace, too, you know? And she goes, oh, yeah, tell me about it. And he comes down, and he thinks about it for a moment, and he's got an idea. Got an idea. He whistles for his friend, comes down, and greets the princess. Does a little bow, and she's excited. Keep your arms and legs inside the carpet, please. And they're about to take off. And he takes her on the most magical date in history. They travel the world. <clears throat> and some great music accompanies it. She's uh, looking at the incredible sights, dipping her finger in the uh, pond. What was really amazing, when I, I do these like crude little drawings, and when I saw the film for the first time in a theater, I was blown away. Because every single, Disney animation is really amazing. The animators like add, the, first the story adds like 90%. Then the animators add another 75%. And the background artists add about 45 more. And the music department adds like 87. And the, everything, every single department makes it better and better and better. Now the math doesn't add up, but it's magic, okay? <laughs> The animator, when the animator did this, what he did was, instead of having Jasmine dip her finger in the um, water, he had the tassel of the magic carpet dip its finger in the water. And I was like, what a magical, beautiful touch that was. It was so cool. So um, this was one of the early visual development pieces that I did that I stuck in. <clears throat> you know, you reuse artwork whenever you can because you have to do hundreds of drawings a day, practically. And the date ends, and they're really happy and do this iconic shot of them flying in front of the, uh, the you know, moon there, and he drops her off. And it's this awkward moment when it's time to do the kiss, and he gets a little help from the carpet, and he kisses her, and they're both a little shocked. 
and a beautiful moment. She's a little startled, a little shy, and she says, good night. Aladdin is falling in love. So my choreographic nightmare actually worked out. I learned from my mistake, and it really helped me. <clears throat> so I want to talk a little about story now. <clears throat> we want to learn how to train your dragons um, so you will not be stuck in development hell. Everybody know what development hell is? It's when you're trying to create a story and nothing is working. It's very common, okay? But you read storytelling books and there's no pictures usually. And as Alice in Wonderland once said, what good is a, picture, a, a book without pictures? So why shouldn't visual storytellers have visual ways to map out their stories? So can you all see where we are right now? Or are you lost? <laughs> are you still lost? Or are you getting a starting a picture of where we're going to go? <clears throat> is it destiny to be lost in story department with all these dead ends? This is how it feels sometimes. It's like overwhelming. Well, what is a story? What shape is it? Is it a, is it a metaphor? Does it have a particular shape? Is it a MacGuffin? Whatever that is. Hitchcock never really explained it very well. <clears throat> Does it look like a little mouse? Or maybe a rabbit? How about a rhinoceros? How about an elephant? Now, does it matter whether the elephant's trunk is up or down? Well, does the shape even really matter? Well, let's go back to 300 BC. There's this uh, ancient Greek dude called Aristotle. <clears throat> and he wrote this book called The Poetics. And he graphed stories like this, like this big mountain. And what he said was that, uh, I think, I, yes, I can move, OK. He said the first part of it, we start down here, and the story starts. There's an exciting incident that gets the story going. Rise in complications, a crisis near the top, a climax, and then we come crashing back down with a resolution of the story, and the audience is brought back to the theater. Now, what he was doing was mapping the audience's involvement over time. But he really didn't tell us, how do you get the audience that involved at each of those moments, OK? So I realized, well, it is the audience involvement in terms of how exciting the picture should be. So there are things like pacing and um, the, the amount of uh, dramatic action, whether it's uh, high activity of chases or things like that, or different conflicts between the characters. That is what gets your audience involved. So I started revising Aristotle. Um, start with a bang, OK? That gets the audience involved quicker, so you have a big action opening, okay? And then, to make the crisis and climax even bigger, you have a little plateau where the audience gets to rest and kind of think about what they've seen already, okay? Um, so, I'm gonna give a pop quiz. You weren't expecting a quiz tonight, right? Okay, what movie is this like? Nemo? What? Nemo? Yes, actually it is Da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. Any action movie, any superhero movie, they always start with a big exciting thing. And then it slowly has the rising complications, whatever they are. And it gets a plateau and then follows down. How about this movie? What would this feel like if you were watching this movie? It brings you up, drops you in the, down in the middle, and then jumps up again like a camel. What would that feel like? I'll give you a clue. Oh. Ratatouille. I watched the movie, and 45 minutes in, I felt like this is the end of the movie. Wait, it can't end yet. It's 45 minutes. And then all of a sudden, you know, the, the, the hero got what he wanted. He had a rat as a chef, and he was super successful and everything. And then the villain came back in slowly, and I had to start all of my motor, my story motor inside, all over again to watch the rest of the movie. It's a great movie. I love it. But the shape of it broke it. That's why the shape of a movie matters. OK, what movie is this? What, is it, what would it feel like? Yeah, yes, yes, Lord of the Rings. It has too many endings, right? 45 minutes of endings. That's as long as the first half of Ratatouille. Okay, what about this one? 
how is that movie going to feel? Yeah. Remains of the day. Okay, about a butler and a, a maid who you think they're going to fall in love. They work for a Nazi sympathizer guy. And their relationship goes nowhere. Okay? Now, how about this one? And it's not Char uh, Jaws. <laughs> what movie would end like? How would you feel at the end of that movie? <laughs> Transformers? No, Transformers is totally flat. <laughs> no, I, 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 I stand corrected. It goes way up, is totally flat, way up there, and then just comes down. You don't get a chance to rest. The audience needs contrast. They need some slow parts. They need to process what's happening, you know? Okay, um, so we're choosing not Jaws. Okay, you know what movie it is? No Country for Old Men. It's just, what happened to the end of the movie? Did they lose the, the third reel? Okay, now, you all might be familiar with plot point theories. I've read so many plot point theories books. I don't know what, is it mathematics? Are they plotting something? I don't know what they're plotting, okay? Because the, they don't have a graph usually. So, I've read books where there's like five, or there three. I know there's one book that has five, there's another I think that has seven, there's one I think nine, there's another one with um, uh, probably more than you can count, and there's actually one that has, believe it or not, 127 plot points, or just points that e each page of a script is described, okay? So what do they actually plot, and how big are they? Are they tiny? Are they big? <laughs> how do you get from one plot point to another? Is it like a bridge, or maybe a clothesline? They didn't help me because they're too abstract for me. I wanted to write stories, but I wasn't given guidance, okay? Tonight, you are gonna get guidance. And you may like it, you may not. I've learned a tremendous amount from all of these books, so I'm making fun of them, kind of tongue in cheek, but I have learned a lot from all of them, okay? <clears throat> so let's look at the famous hero's journey, okay? We go from around the circle counterclockwise into the underworld and back to return home, okay? It starts with a hero. There's a call to adventure. And he says, I'm not going, okay? Reviews the call. Then he meets a mentor along the way. Then he goes through a threshold. And who knows, I think down there it gets really weird for me because he meets the goddess. <laughs> and then he leaves seizing the sword, okay? But it's all, how do I, I'm doing a movie about rabbits, how does this fit in, you know? And he comes home with the elixir, okay? <laughs> so, what is the right shape? Whose theory is right? Learn from them all and make your own choices. So, why do we watch? I think the most important question is, what do you want your audience to feel? Because all storytelling is, this is fun, because I do this in class while I'm you know, starting to give a lecture, and I'll be drawing a little bit, and then I'll talk about some other stuff. You know, I may talk about um, some childhood experiences, and um, I ask what I'm doing sometimes, and they'll say, well, you're drawing a curve, you, you know, and then at some point, in your mind, you'll start to think, where is this going? You know, like, what, what are your expectations here? And it'll continue, and then what happened? Okay, how do you all feel right now? Okay, good. How does that feel? Remember that feeling. Do you remember this movie? There you go. That is the simplest story theory there is. Creating, and I call it, the circle of suspense. Anytime you ask a narrative question, 
you are opening a circle of suspense. Close it for the audience. Your story is going to be a hierarchy of narrative questions. So you'll open them. There'll be big ones that kind of overarch the whole story, like will Luke destroy the Death Star? And there'll be little ones along the way. Or will they get eaten by the planet that's actually a, a monster? Okay? Okay, it's time to get in terror again. <sighs> Can't keep coming back to Snow White. Um, Disney had this thing called the, uh, the Gong Show. And in it, any employee could pitch an idea. So I went and I thought, well, this is an incredible opportunity. Until I got in the room and sat down and saw Michael Eisner, Jeffrey Katzenberg, Roy Disney, Peter Schneider, and a whole bunch, you know, it was like a scary room. So after that, any room was easy. So I was there when Mike Gabriel pitched Pocahontas. And all he did was said, it's kind of like Romeo and Juliet with uh, John Smith and Pocahontas. Oops, sorry. Gotta watch that. Okay. Um, he showed this poster and they bought it on the spot. Um, now, I'm thinking inside. Are we okay here? Okay. I'm thinking, Romeo and Juliet, we don't do tragedies at Disney. And so I did something kind of insane. A friend of mine had said he'd spoke to him or her boss just to get feedback how he was doing. So I thought, well, let me go do that, you know, just to kind of see where I'm at and stuff. So I go and I see my boss, and um, <laughs> I still remember it to this day. Um, I asked, you know, how I'm doing, and he gave me feedback. He said, you know, your storyboarding's fine, you know, but sometimes your boards are emotionally cool. Now, this is the last thing you want to ever want to hear if you were a storyboard artist, because your job is to make the audience feel, okay? So, again, stab me in the heart, why don't you? Um, the only film that you want to feel these storyboards are emotionally cool. Okay. I happened to be working on Pocahontas at the time. And the ending of Pocahontas, the way it was scripted and the way the first storyboard storyboarded it, was kind of like the ending of a summer camp movie. This was some of the original first version boards. It started on a bright, sunny day. <clears throat> we had originally had a turkey who was doing jokes. Um, and John Smith and Pocahontas kiss kind of like somebody you'd kiss your grandmother goodbye. And then uh, he gets brought on the stretcher, and then everybody has a big party, and John Smith is inside the ship, so I don't even know how he can see Pocahontas outside. She waves goodbye, the ship leaves, and you know what? Their ending was emotionally cool. So I saw this as an opportunity, a challenge. I went to my boss and said, listen, I, I have a vision for this. I'd like... First, I asked my, um, my producer and directors if they would mind, and I asked the storyboard artist, and I got approval from everybody that I could try an ending. And um, <clears throat> everybody said yes, and I saw my boss in the hall, and I said, I'm going to do this, and I'm not going to be satisfied till I make you cry. Okay? So, what do you think the first thing I did was? I watched every single sad movie I could find, okay? I watched all the classics, like Romeo and Juliet, Hamlet, and you know that other classic? <laughs> yes, I studied them all. <clears throat> and I found out that we were not doing a tragedy. Nobody dies. John Smith gets wounded, but he goes back to England and is healed. We were doing an ecological love story that had a sad ending. So in my movies that I watched, I watched one that I said, this movie fits what we're doing so much better. Anybody guess what that movie was? It wasn't Pocahontas or West Side Story. We were doing Casablanca. Because they knew they loved each other, but they had to part for a bigger reason, for world peace. Okay, so here is the storyboards that I redid based on 
having a new paradigm to work with. First of all, this was Disney's first sad ending movie, okay? So it had to be something really special. So first, we don't start on a bright sunny day. We set the ship is out you know, in the ocean. They have to take little rowboats to get out there. It's all a moody, misty Virginia day. And over to the ship. And <clears throat> the Indians aren't there yet. Ignore the feathers, OK? <laughs> they were not supposed to be there. Um, and John Smith is wondering whether even Pocahontas will show. She shouldn't be standing around the dock waiting with everybody. The, the star has to make an entrance. OK, so now I have a narrative question. I've started a circle of suspense. Will she even show before they have to leave? Thomas gives him some water, and he looks over and sees through the mist. The Indians start to approach. The settlers, what do they do? Before she was a savage, now she's an Indian princess. They take off their hats in respect. She walks up <clears throat> over to... Thomas takes off his hat and tells her that he, ha she has, to go, he has to go back. It's his only chance. Pocahontas comes over, and she cradles him in her, her arms. He asks her to come with her, and she looks around and up to her father for guidance. <clears throat> he says it's her decision to make, and he takes off his blanket, he gives it to John Smith and tells him, you're always welcome here, my brother. She returns the compass and says, here, you'll always be able to find me this way. And now it's a moment where they have to part. And it should be a passionate kiss of lovers, not a peck on the cheek. It's time to part. The ship has to leave. We milk the moment. We show little details that tell the story, like cutting to just a picture of hands slowly separating. He's carried out to the ship, <clears throat> brought out on the rowboat, and she gets comfort from her father. He's brought onto the ship. The flags are hoisted, the anchor's raised, and she does her Indian wave goodbye. He waves back with a goodbye that he's learned from her. Pohatwan hugs his daughter, and they watch the ship. She runs off. <clears throat> what I thought about when I did the sequence was, what was it like when I had to leave my family? I would wait at the airport to watch the plane. This was before you know um, the all the new TSA stuff, where you can't be in the airport without like you know, fourth level security clearance. <clears throat> but I thought about that, and you want to get that last glimpse of them before they leave. So Pocahontas runs, and the music swells, just like the billowing of the sails. Her animal friends follow. She runs up to her precipice and watches as the ship leaves. The leaves billow out and fill the sails as the ship goes over the horizon, and we're out. <clears throat> Thank you. It was a really fun and challenging sequence, and I learned. I learned when you have um, challenges to turn them into opportunities. So unfortunately, I was not able to watch the final screening. But I heard that all the executives were there in the um, film, and word came back that there was not one dry eye in the house. So I felt vindicated. So yes, I hope you take your challenges and turn them into um, great opportunities. So the secret of storytelling. We have three classic stories that Hollywood has relied on. First one is the fish out of water story. It's got inherent story conflict, which creates circles of suspense. Somebody is thrown into a world that they know nothing about, and they don't know how to behave. Great conflict. The other is an unholy alliance of two characters that have nothing to do, know what to do with each other, and they're forced to stay together. That's another one. 
And the third one was the one that I learned the most from, which is the boy meets girl story. So, the boy meets girl. Girl is a little puzzled. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Okay, the boy loses the girl. And then the boy gets girl. Anybody ever ask, why? Why does the boy lose the girl? There's something missing. It's not three pieces, it's four. Why does he lose the girl? Anybody know? Okay, let's work it out. <clears throat> Jasmine suspects that po Prince Ali is really Aladdin the beggar boy. Okay? And he's boasting, yes, I like to uh, get out and travel around, pretend I'm a, um, a beggar in the, in the streets sometimes. And um, she goes, well, you know, d does Abu go with you? And he goes, oh, yes, Abu loves it. Ooh, no, uh, and he's caught. She figures out that he's not, he is Aladdin. What did he do? Something dumb. The boy does something dumb and he loses the girl, right? So, he was supposed to just be himself and she would have liked him. The story would have been over, but she would have liked him, okay? So, why do we tell stories? Well, more important, why do we watch stories? And now let's look at what happens when we do wish. A wish plus attention creates expectations. And expectations involve the emotions of hope and fear. It's the only real emotions that are cinematic that you can give your audience. Okay, you can't make them hungry or tired or other things like that. Uh, you can't even directly make them happy. But you can create a circle of suspense, creating tension, and make them hope that you will fill the circle and fear that maybe you won't. <clears throat> so a character makes a wish and that drives the story. So let's look at a few uh, films of how that kind of works. The Wish. This was a sequence that was not used in um, uh, Ice Age 3. Scrat trying to find treasure. And he goes inside and sees this pile of treasure with a giant um, acorn on top. He races for it. And he does it wrong because the place where he brought, was brought into was like the um, Indiana Jones Temple of Doom, kind of, or um, the first one, um, where there are traps everywhere. So he hits one of the traps, goes flying. Arrows come out flying from everywhere. He's covered in arrows. The worst happens. He gets the consequences of his bad behavior. This was from Space Chimps. At the end of the movie, we didn't have a climax. They built a ship ship um, from the pieces of other satellites on the planet they were on and they were just going to return home. And so we just had to wait for them to fly back home and land on Earth, okay? So I said, we need a climax. What can we do? Well, what if they forgot to build landing gear? Now, that question turned out to be a perfect thematic ending for the movie because in the beginning, Ham, the space chimp, didn't want to be a space chimp. He was, his grandfather was the first astronaut chimp in space, and he was famous and stuff. And he could never live up to his grandfather's expectations. And so he was just a circus chimp being shot out of the cannon, but he never could hit the target. So now, will he be able to land the spaceship as they return to Earth? We don't have landing gear. They talk to the other chimps on the ground, and the chimps steal, steal a little um, pickup truck. They look in the wind mirror, mirror and see they're about to land. They're trying to build up speed to, to match them. Ship's coming in, and they have a crash landing, but he makes it. Comes smashing through, and he's a hero now. Okay? So, I was trying to find lots of ways to figure out how stories work. And what I came up with is, now, this is an older slide, so I need to revise it. What if we map the audience's hopes and fears rather than just the character's ups and downs, okay? So, a little bit of math. Don't worry. Take a deep breath. We're going to be fine. <clears throat> the wish, wrong, worst, wonder are the stages of learning. 
We want something. We wish for something. We do trial and error. We don't know how to do it. We've never done it before. So we make mistakes. And mistakes have consequences. When we learn from our mistakes, that's when we come to a place of learning and wonder. These are the stages of learning. So, on top we have hope, and the bottom we have fear. Now, we're actually going to make a graph. <clears throat> what happens when we wish? Well, we start with a wish, and it starts already going downhill towards fear. Because in the beginning of the movie, the character is always an underdog. You know why we need underdogs? Because we all start out as underdogs. Okay, we all started not going, being the first one in kindergarten. We thought we were the only one that was new to it. But everybody in there was new to it. Okay, we are for our first job. Everybody's already working. We're always the underdog. And so the world is, we think it's against us. So we take action. And we take action, we start heading towards our goal. And the audience gets excited. But we're often making mistakes, like Aladdin pretending to be somebody we're not, he's not. Or we cheat, or we lie, like meet the parents, where he's lying all the time. Um, <clears throat> or liar, liar. Then we have to suffer the consequences of our own behavior. And we have to go to hell. This is a place of chaos, it's not fun, it's terrifying. Um, it's really scary. And when I discovered this theory, this is exactly where I was, in this place. Because that's the only place where you can really look at things and learn from um, where you're at. Finally, you go leave hell and you come, fight for what's right and you come to a place of wonder where things are absolutely amazing. Okay, that slide is out of order, sorry about that. And it's four simple W's. The wish, wrong, worse than wonder. And we have three turning points. Anybody ever hear what a turning point actually was before? It's something that turns the story. Well, in this case, where it crosses this blue line right here, the story is now going from fear to hope. The second turning point towards the middle of the story goes from hope to fear when we suffer the consequences. And finally, the story goes from fear back to hope. And now we've got contrast which Transformer movies don't have. So we feel, this, we feel this emotional rush because now we've suffered with the character and we're now enjoying the... the, the um, we're empathizing with how they feel and enjoying the wonder that they come to. Okay? So, the wish goes wrong, the worst happens... The, the wish goes wrong, the worst happens, and leads to wonderment. Now, another way to remember this, okay, it's the shape of a dragon. Starts with the dragon tail, goes down a little, and each of those bumps are hopes and fears, because we've got to keep the audience going between hope and fear, like a giant pendulum, swinging to fear, swinging back to hope, throughout the movie, otherwise we'll lose the audience. We've got to keep them interested. And then it goes down, up, bumping all the time, and comes out, and you make the dragon smile. I added a few legs, and you get a dragon shape. And the wings are the flight of fantasy. So, if the character, if the audience is identifying with the characters, then they are going to go up and down with your story. And does that mean we're actually directing what they should feel? Of course we are. That's our job, to direct the audience's feelings. So, <clears throat> I have given you the framework for the story. The story is the emotional journey. Now, there's another piece that happens, which is all the stuff happens. You've got a unique world where there's, there's uh, talking... Um, Badgers or whatever that guy is in, in, in um, Guardians of the Galaxy. There's Wookiees in other movies. Um, you know, there's psychopathic killers that use um, compressed air in um, No Country for Old Men. You make up the world, and the world becomes your plot, okay? Everybody know what the plot actually is? 
The plot is the stuff we see above. The story is what's underneath. And the story is emergent from the interwoven part relationship between the parts. The plot actually is just a bunch of lies, right? It's a bunch of entertaining lies. But underneath that, the plot is what reveals the truth of the emotional change inside of ourselves. Now, I'll give you a, this movie I love because it's a great example of how clear the dragon theory, theory really is. <clears throat> Every single step in School of Rock is driven by Dewey's wish. Everybody know what that is? He wants to become a rock and roll god, okay? He's been str a struggling musician who can't pay the rent. So the big narrative question is, will Dewey become a rock and roll god? Will he be able to live his passion? Okay? So the stakes are fame or failure. Hope on the top, fear on the bottom. And he even gets a lesson in the beginning. Dewey, be res uh, comes from the uh, girlfriend. Dewey, be responsible, get a job, pay your rent. So what does Dewey do? He goes, um, he talks on the phone, he goes, yeah, um, uh, this is a job for Ned. Hang on a second, I'll get him. Uh, uh, this is Ned Schneebly. Oh, uh, you have a job for me? Oh, uh, sounds great. And what's the, how much does the gig pay? You know? And he steals a job. He pretends to be a teacher. He's not, right? But he pretends to be his teacher. Then he goes in, and what happens? These kids in this school want to learn. <laughs> if you're going to have a movie about a guy pretending to be a teacher, you put him in the opposite, worst possible world, the entertaining eyes. So these kids at Harris would love learning and they want to learn and they love getting those little gold stars. Especially, um, what's her name? Well, Summer. Um, and he just wants to give them recess all day. So Dewey then finds out they can play music and he selfishly creates this rock school, this project where he's going to use the kids to make a new band for himself and go to um, do the, the concert. So now, it can go two ways here. He could continue on the same path of being, you know, the kind of egotistical jerk that he is, or he could actually teach these kids. He has a new band now, and he has fame in his eyes. But now he's got to teach for the other teachers. He's got to teach for the principal. He's got to give um, feedback to the other teachers about, you know, um, what is his teaching philosophy? And he basically uses lyrics from rock and roll songs. It's all driven by his wish. He doesn't know how to teach, so he makes it up as he goes along. Finally, what happens is he's exposed by Patty, and the police are coming and stuff, and there's a really ironic scene of the parents, and he's saying, yeah, I really touched your children. I'm sure they touched me. And, and it's like, well, and the parents do not want to hear this, you know? And, he feels terrible. He runs out of the place and he's left. He's, he's ready, almost ready for jail. He's um, threatened by the police. He's in his apartment in his pajamas, sleeping till past noon, and he hears a honking horn outside. And it's the bus full of kids. And they say, Dewey, you're part of this. We, we need you. And he realizes, yes, rock and roll lives. Stick it to the man. And his symbolic death Oh, um, I'm jumping ahead a little bit. Um, he has just entered chaos. It's terrifying, but it's also the birthplace of infinite possibilities. And I'll show you about four of those possibilities. Okay, so the kids actually have gotten the lesson of Dewey about living your passion. So the kids come, and he must be responsible for them. So they go to the concert, and what's really amazing is instead of playing Dewey's song, The Legend of the Rent, he says, we're going to play Zach's song because it's a better song. Dewey has learned the lesson of the story, that you have to be altruistic and help work teamwork with others. And they don't win the concert, but their parents love them, and their, the audience loves them. And Dewey ends up becoming a responsible rock god teacher and getting more than he could have ever imagined. Rock on. <laughs> so, um, 
let's see, I've got still a lot of slides, so I'm going to kind of go th through fast some of it. I have about nine minutes left. So, um, The fugitive actually is an interesting variation because this character doesn't change. Um, the um, Harrison Ford character is basically right from the start, and he's fighting for what's right all, all along. It's the Tommy J Lee James character that goes through a character transformation because he thinks um, he has to follow the letter of the law and what he really needs to be doing, and he's, he's, it's a struggle within himself, is that um, he needs to learn the spirit of the law because he knows that he's probably innocent. So um, we're mapping the audience's hopes and fears. That's the new slide that replaced that. So uh, I'll go through this. Now we have a DeLorean time machine, so we can go through this part pretty quick. So Marty, you are not driving the story in this case. What is a character-driven story? Okay, we're going to do Battle of the Bands now, okay? What does Marty want? Marty wants the girl, of course. What is Marty's problem? He wants to get the, uh, the new band so they can go camping and stuff. But Aunt Marty ends up playing rock and roll before his, before his parents' time, okay? Um, so they don't know what to do with um, when he starts doing the... Um, uh, he's fine with the Chuck Berry part, but when he gets to Hendrix, he's out of time. What does Dewey want? Dewey want no, no, he doesn't want the girl. He wants to become a rock god. His problem is he's lazy. He just wants to stick it to the man. Dewey's reality does not equal his fantasy. So, let's look at the dragon. We've got the problem here. Starts with a problem. There's a lack. Marty wants... The girl, does she have anything to do with the story? <laughs> Not really. She's, you know, just in the beginning. Um, now, back to the future. Okay, Marty saves his father's life, changing the space-time continuum. You know how that goes. <clears throat> and the next up, okay. Now, School of Rock, Dewey's kicked out of his band. Dewey answers Ned's call, desperately steals a job, and pretends to be a teacher. By this point, Dewey is on the wrong way, and he has already set the story in motion based on his wish. Marty doesn't start the story going until almost the middle of the movie when he um, saves his dad's life. So Dewey um, gets his rock band, the rock, he's exposed, he suffers the consequences. Um, his passion has spread beyond him, his students now have it and they return to the, uh, have him go to the show. Dewey makes a sacrifice, and every action in that movie is driven by his wish. It is such a solid story. It's all cause and effect. That's what holds a story together. The cause and effect is the story glue. Okay, so back to the future. Show of hands. Okay? School of Rock. Okay, School of Rock wins. Finally, they get their comeuppance. Okay, now it's your turn. All right, I think I'm going to go through this fast because it's kind of summarizing kind of what we've done. If you want to create a story, basically you go through this. Find out what your character wants. Find a flaw for them. The opposite of the flaw is what they need to learn. So now you're starting to weave the story together already. Okay? Then set it in an interesting world that is going to bring out the worst in the character. Basically, the villain's job is to press the psychological buttons of your hero. Okay? So a perfect example is Meet the Parents. Okay? In Meet the Parents, the character is a, um, a liar. Okay? That's his, his flaw. So what is the perfect obstacle? What's the perfect villain for um, a liar? Your father-in-law is an ex-CIA <laughs> lie detector expert, okay? It's a perfect villain. So you match, you're basically weaving together oppos opposites, okay? This is kind of still um, summarizing what we've done. Stories are literally woven together this way. It is the narrative question that drives us on. And then the plot is all the stuff that presses down on the, on the hero to actually start using their de psychological defenses. 
So they do it wrong. So it comes to the surface. That way the audience can see it. And then he has an opportunity to learn, okay? All actions have consequences. The character ties themselves in a tighter knot. The lesson now is resisted, but <clears throat> now everything appears in a new light. They act in sync with their head, heart, and soul. But there's still more obstacles. Amends must be made to people they've hurt. A moment of truth to choose which way they're going to go. Did they learn the lesson or not? And finally, they make success. Now you go back and make sure that all your expectations, your circles of suspense, are closed. It's all with setups and payoffs, foreshadowing and events, and now you've got the ends, loose ends tied up. Anybody ever wonder where that expression came from? To tie up all the loose ends of a story? Now you see it. <laughs> and your still story will still have a sound structure and will be uniquely yours because it'll be your character with your flaws set in your unique world, okay? Every movie, uh, this, mo this, this um, kind of theory fits really well for happy ever after movies, uh, romance movies, many animation movies. And if you like working on index cards, just line them up index cards wise. And now you can see your whole story with one visual. You can make sure everything's connected, all your setups and payoffs, okay? And let me see, okay, I've got a picture of a dragon here again, okay. Our universe is of what is possible has expanded. So, when you're living your life, you're gonna suffer consequences of things that are wrong. And you often may keep going in a circle in this middle section of the dragon be it's dragon's belly because you keep using the same defenses. Finally, when you learn, you rise above those and you get more than you imagine and your universe expands of what you're capable of doing. And you'll go through this process many times during your life. And if you don't learn, if you want to make this a tragedy, the movie basically cut right there. The dragon is headless, okay? That's what happens with villains. They don't learn and they suffer. Romeo and Juliet, he never learned. Okay, this is an example of... Sorry. Um, this is an example of an analysis I did of Back to the Future, of mapping out all the connections. It's a great way to see all the visual pieces of your story. I've even done it where I've had a story, which is one of the books that I was offering in the raffle tonight, um, of Iggy's story, and did little icons. Okay, I'm running out of time. Oh, okay, of, of things that you've done wrong. Free your own genie and make your own wishes come true. Thank you for coming along on the ride. <laughs> the end. Okay, um, my portfolio is on Blogspot, if anybody wants to see it. I also have a Weebly portfolio, which is just my name, francisglebus.weebly.com, and feel free to link in. And these are some of the publications that I have created. And I hand it off. Thank you so much, Francis. I think we should have another round of applause to one second. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the microphone. I think it just got a little bumped, but it'll be fine. We will fix it. Okay, so we're going to take a quick changeover now. So Laura Barbara is going to take the stage. Um, it's going to be... We've never done this before, so... <laughs> We'll see what happens. It should be a lot of fun. Um, awesome student volunteers over here. Um, so yeah, let's have a round of applause to get everyone going. <laughs> Thank you. Yay. Uh, uh,
Hello. Do you want me to take your bag? I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold on to it. it. Um, okay. Hey, so uh, just as a thought, uh, I'm Laura Barbera. Nice to see you all. Thank you for being here. If you need to escape, escape now. Um, if uh, my nice people need a bottle of water, I would say grab a bottle of water right now. It would be a good time. Um, yay. So that was awesome. That was awesome. Oh my God, that is, it's, isn't it great when somebody dissects something for you and makes it so clear and easy to understand and you get really excited about it? Like, don't you guys all want to write stories right now? I want to, ah, right? I am so amped. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and make it sensible for what I do. So I am a character animator. Um, I've been animating for a really long time. Uh, I've been in the industry for 22 years, and uh, I have had a great career doing a whole lot of really super fun things. Um, so I've been very, very fortunate to work on different projects of different types. Most of my career has been spent kind of uh, animating uh, creatures murdering each other in one way or another. Um, and then I ended up uh, at Nickelodeon for six years doing the most adorable creatures, loving on each other, and it, it makes your brain go crazy. But now I'm back to murdering, so I feel much better. Um, uh, so, but I am a, I'm a character animator, a creature animator. So I do stuff that is animals, I do stuff that's people, I do weird shapey blobby things that do things. Um, but I do a little bit of everything, so it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty exciting. Um, and what I realized, when I first started, the first jobs that I had, um, I worked for uh, a company that doesn't exist anymore. Unfortunately, a lot of the companies have gone bye-bye. Um, but the first place that I worked for, we did um, a Starship Troopers TV show. So it was called Roughnecks, the Starship Troopers Chronicles. And it was kind of um, a really good introduction to uh, the whole entire production process. So we did a lot of our own mocap. At that company, we had our own mocap stage. So as animators, we got to direct actors. Um, and as those actors did their thing, we were watching it to kind of figure out how do we make all of this make sense when we go to animation? Because when you're directing an actor, uh, you're hoping that what they do is going to make sense when it comes to animation. So I kind of got the idea of, of how it was good to not just be an animator, but to also be an actor which is kind of what I am. As animators, uh, we are sort of animating one frame at a time in a way as an actor is animating. So as animators, we become the actor, right? So kind of getting yourself into the mindset of what an actor has to do on stage to be convincing in what they do uh, takes a little practice. The other thing that I kind of realized when I was doing all this fun stuff was that when I first got those jobs that I had, I would go to work and then go home. Nah, I would go to work, nah, I would go home. And I realized if I keep going to work and going home, I'm probably gonna kill myself. Uh, and what I realized was that I needed hobbies, like I needed other things to do that would keep me a nice, normal human being. Um, and I tend to try and do stuff that's terrifying um, personally, the more I'm afraid of it, the more I feel like it's probably a good thing for me to go do. So I uh, am actually an incredibly painfully shy person. Uh, I'm a hardcore introvert. Like I am just like, oh God, somebody's talking to me. And it makes my wiggly wigglies and get the eye contact. And my brain explodes. Um, so what, <laughs> what I realized was it would probably help me if I got a little like on stage experience because I knew it would terrify me. But I also knew in terms of animation and acting, it would make me a better animator because I'd be able to have conversations with people and not freak out. <laughs> and, and as I started taking improv classes, um, I realized that it was like my salvation because it allowed me to kind of be like, improv is, is, is ethereal, right? It's not scripted. There's no script. There's nothing to memorize. Um, you pretty much, you make stuff up. And you keep your fingers crossed that it's going to be okay. 
and it kind of almost always is. And the reason why it's kind of almost always is because you have the support of people who are on stage with you. Stand up is like, you get up on stage, you tell a whole bunch of jokes, you hold the microphone, you guys, right? Um, with improv, you're very dependent on the love of your team and the love of the people that you have with you. So I have the love of some very wonderful students who have volunteered. So let's give them a, a, a yay hand, first of all. Um, so what you're gonna see is you're gonna see some beginning acting exercises and how we use those exercises to tap into character and how we use those exercises to tap into story, which makes a heck of a lot of sense with what we just watched, right? So we're all storytellers, right? We are. If you are going to a, a, you know, your friend's house, the first thing that you walk in the door, if you've had a hard day is, oh my God, let me tell you what just happened. Right? This thing, and that guy, and then this, and then can you believe it? And then your friend's like, what? And then you're like, yeah! And they're like, no! And then you're like, stop! And then you're like, ah! And then you have this whole conversation that's like for me with my friends, it's just a bunch of grunting noises usually. Um, so I have a great set of people where I can give them a look of like, and they're like, uh-oh. Or I can give them a look of like, and they're like, ah. Or I can give them a look of like, and they're like, ooh. Right? So I do a lot of communication with my body. And I think it's probably because I'm an animator, right? So in my day-to-day -day life, this is it. This is what you get. Um, so uh, it's taken a long time for me to be this comfortable. When I first started, uh, uh, if, if this was a back wall, and we had improv classes. This was me on the back wall. Oh God, it's my turn. All right, I better think of something funny. Ah oh, crap, ah oh, crap, I totally missed the chant. All right, I better go back over here, <laughs> right? Uh, so <laughs> the, joy, the joy of improv is that you don't have to worry about it. If it's a, a miserable, colossal, floppy failure, it goes away in 30 seconds. Nobody's gonna remember it, you know? Like, it's not, it goes away. So it's really good for you to basically let go. It's, as a, as a introvert, uh, weirdo, uh, uh, people scare me, um, control freak, improv was kind of like, oh, wait, I, I'll be okay. So it was a weird coping mechanism in a way, too. Um, it's, improv has basically helped me to be able to talk to you guys, oh, my brain, right? Normally my brain would be like, eyes, there are eyes looking at me. There are eyes, there's so many eyes. So many eyes, so much judging. But I don't care what you guys think, right? I don't care, right? Because we're gonna have a good time and I'm so confident in the fact that we're all gonna have a good time that I'm totally cool about it. And if we don't, this will, this never happened. <laughs> None of this ever happened, right? So, um, so we are gonna do some basic stuff that anybody can do. Anybody can do this stuff. Um, some of these guys have never done any of these things ever. Uh, and some of them I've, I've known for years. I've got some students of mine who I've had for two years um, who are gonna be like, I got this. We just did this yesterday. Uh, so, but because everybody loves each other and they don't even know each other, they're all gonna take care of each other. And that's the loveliness about improv, right? So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask all of them to come on up um, and I'm gonna remind them that they need to stay in this lighted area. Uh, we, are, we are gonna make a circle, so you're gonna see some butts. Sorry, but enjoy the butts that you get. So circle up, circle up all of my friends, circle up all of my friends. Um, so a lot of the stuff that we do is, is trust exercises, right? We do a lot of things to build trust, to make sure that we are taking care of each other. Um, and basically, it's, it's a weird love fest, sorry, it's a strange thing, there's, there's, you'll see, it'll be fine. Um, so the first thing that we usually do is we do a warm up, right? And so we, we are all tight and excited and what's happening, I don't know. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a thing called, I call it crazy eights. And it's just basically, you're gonna count down each body part. 
So we start with our right hand and we count to eight and then left hand and then right foot and then left foot. Pretty easy going. So would you like to lead it? Okay. I'll, I will do it with you, but I'm kind of here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 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 One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 One, two, three, four, five. 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 One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. 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 One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, 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 one. Yay! Um, I know that looks crazy. That looks crazy, but it gets everybody amped up and they're all excited and they're like, what are you gonna do next? I don't know. Um, so uh, the, the first main thing that we try and work on is, again, this trusting thing. But the other thing that we try and work on is um, taking information in and putting information out, which is what we are as humans, right? But especially as animators. As animators, we are constantly looking for inspiration we're looking for a story, and we're putting it out, we're putting out our interpretation of it, right? We take people that we know, we make characters out of them if we're character designers, right? We take experiences that we know, we tweak them, and then we make our stories, we make our shorts. All the stuff that I do when I'm on stage is probably based on somebody I know. It might be based on somebody here, right? Um, I, <laughs> a student that I had who I had the very first year that I taught when I was in California was a very, very particular character. Uh, her name was Terry, and she was adorable. Terry, um, Terry loved food, but she loved food that was tiny. She liked tiny food, like baby carrots and like baby, you know, like tiny little bits of broccoli. So one day she was like, my, so she, was, she had this lovely uh, boyfriend, and they were like, we're gonna get married. And I was like, oh, that's great, how, how, how fun is this? She's like, we're gonna have a tiny wedding. <laughs> and I was like, you're what now? She's like, um, we're gonna do this. So we're gonna have it like this. We're gonna have it that all of the carrots are tiny. Oh, so we're gonna have tiny carrots and we're gonna have little thimbles. And the thimbles are where you're gonna put your champagne in. So when you toast, you're like, cling. And so, and here's the thing. So I, my boyfriend, Dan, cause he's gonna be my husband soon. I love Dan so much. Dan and I are gonna have this tiny wedding and you're totally gonna come to it, right? Oh my God, I'm so excited. Because everything that we do will be small. And then we're all gonna pretend that we're giants so that you can walk around and say, I've got giant food in my belly, but it's tiny. Right? That's a conversation that actually happened. <laughs> um, and, and so I basically, I basically watched and I was like, go on, go on. I ended up writing up that whole experience as a monologue that I perform in front of audiences. I get really into it, there's a lot of things that go on. Um, but it's, cr it's, cr it's so easy to basically be, um, and these guys know, a weird creeper, like a bit of a, like a, bit of a stalker of, of anybody. Anybody can be a fa passionate fodder for your imagination if you amp it up a little bit. You can also take people and, you know, like if you guys make a character out of me, it's probably already a 10, right? Um, but imagine this at like a hundred, yeah, right? So there's, <laughs> there's, there's always room for you to take inspiration from, you know, everything that you see in life and kind of make it be something awesome. So, um, but how do we start? Hmm, trust, getting to know each other. Um, again, a lot of my communication is through silent eyeballing, right? I do the laser eyeballs, I got you, I got you. We got it, you got you, got you, got you, got you, got you, that thing is happening, right? So I communicate a lot with my, with my eyes and my body when I'm doing stuff. So for these guys, the, the first thing that they're going to do is they are going to, um, 
look at each other in the eyes while I randomly walk over to this secret area over here. Secret area, nothing's happening to look at. Great. Um, and we're going to play a little thing called tape ball, but I don't have any tape, so it's just paper ball. This is a very high-tech uh, object that you get from the recycle bin and then crumple up <laughs> into this thing that is now good times. So some of these guys know each other's names, some of them they don't. In beginning improv classes, you do exercises where you do name games and you'd really get to know, know each other. But for the sake of where we're at, we're going to play a little tape ball. So tape ball, sorry, paper ball. So paper ball is basically like um, you've got paper ball, and you're going to pick somebody across the room, across the, the circle from you, and you're going to ask them, paper ball? <laughs> Which is the subtext story of, would you like paper ball? And the person that they've made eye contact with is going to say, paper ball. Which basically means, yes. Please give me paper ball. I have been waiting for paper ball my whole life. Finally, the opportunity has arisen. Paper ball. Um, so once that person takes paper ball, then they go and look at somebody else and they're like, paper ball? Um, and you can do this in, in the most like paper ball. Uh, but it's so much fun when you're like, a little bit of a character doing paper ball with a little bit of an inflection, a little bit of personality, right? And you're just chucking around a paper ball, right? Um, uh, paper ball? Paper ball. Oh. Paper ball. Awesome. Hold on to paper ball for a second. So, <laughs> agreements, saying yes. I would like all of the things that you're talking about. Yes now, please. Um, fantastic. I like to complicate things as much as possible. Um, um, so, I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to take paper ball back for a second. Paper ball, no, paper ball, paper ball will just stay there. And I will introduce red ball. Red ball? So uh, again, I like to make things much worse. Uh, hold on to Red Ball. I like to make it worse because um, it's a good time. Green Ball. Green Ball. And keep Red Ball going around. So now there's two balls going in. So in life, many things are happening at the same time, right? So as animators, we are constantly like, how do I balance what's happening? Um, so try at this moment, ooh, green ball. At this moment, at this moment, try, try and just throw from across the room so we don't get hit at this moment, right? You're going to get hit soon. So just try and throw across. Um, so we're, we're constantly trying to um, pay attention to all the things that are going on around in our world, right? We're trying to process information. We're trying to balance it. In this case, your job when you don't have the ball is to basically be like, where's the ball? Who's got the ball? I want that ball, right? Because people over here kind of are looking for somebody to give the ball to. Blue 
blue ball. <laughs> What's happening? Uh, blue ball. And continue to pass. So at this point, our, our lovely people, our, their brains are exploding. Uh, they're like, what's happening? I have no idea. I don't know how to come. Oh, what's going on? I have no idea. But everybody's in agreement, right? Everybody's paying attention to everything that's going on. Um, will you guys freeze, freeze for your second? Oh, whoever catch, hold on to that. Um, OK. Uh, because I enjoy pain, uh, um, <laughs> I'm going to make things worse. Paperball paper is back in play. However, paperball, now when you are asking, would you like paperball, now you have to go over and say, paperball? And then you say, paperball. Now my job is I have to walk across now, you are in the line of fire, my friends. <laughs> You're in the line of fire. So your job at this point, people with the balls, is to be super conscious of not hitting anybody, right? Um, come forward a little bit so you're a bit more in the light, right? Um, and be gentle with each other. Just be gentle. We love. There's love. So keep going. Go. So once we start to introduce movement into it, we get things more complicated. When you guys freeze, freeze a second, freeze. When you are passing, okay, stand up so you don't die. <laughs> when, when you pass paper ball, you steal their place. So as you are, as you are coming over with said paper ball, may I, may I, may I? Um, as you come over with paper ball, you're saying, you've said yes to paper ball, and you're gonna break eye contact with me and find somebody else who you're gonna plan to do this to, right? So that what's gonna happen is I'm gonna give you this and I'm gonna slowly take your spot. <laughs> keep going, keep going. So be conscious, be conscious of each other. And so anytime that you're holding stuff for too long, it means that somebody's not like, because right now everybody's like, where is everything? I don't know where everything is. Oh. So after this one, freeze a second again. Freeze, oh wait, hoo hoo. Uh, so that's perfect, so freeze again. So this has demonstrated some fun things, right? We have now been in agreement. We have been processing information at rapid speeds, right? We're taking things in. We're being kind to each other, right? So we're being chivalrous, right? We're waiting for people to say yes to things, and we're helping them out. How'd you guys feel about red ball, green ball, blue ball, tape ball? Awesome. Uh, I'm going to put these down for just a wee second. Um, uh, will you throw me back red ball? Awesome. Will you throw me back blue ball? Whoop. Will you Hand me back the green ball. Paper ball? What? Um, uh, that's, that's just being an animator. You just have you know, good eye and coordination, um, which you kind of actually do. Um, as an animator, I have some weird, good sensibility of my body. Um, I'm really good at knowing balance. Um, I don't know why. I have no idea why I can do the things that I can do. Um, but it's because I'm aware of the principles of animation of what I have to do, quite honestly, in order for me to balance like this, I have to put my weight over that. The second that I don't, I fall backwards, but we'll get into that in a second. Does that make sense? Totally. Um, yay, clap for them for, for red ball, green ball, blah, 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 blah. Thank you. Um, visual cues are helpful. Uh, so let us give, let's give, Let's give half of you guys a break for a second. Yeah, you figure out half. <laughs> um, and let's get you guys kind of more in a U shape. Let's get you guys in a U shape. Fantastic. Um, uh, 
we're going to do yes and, which is the, the pointy thing, but let's have the audience see your, your lovely faces a little bit more. So it basically means, the other thing in theater is that you never want to have this, even though this is good. Um, <laughs> you, always wanna, you always want to see faces and expressions, because I get a lot of mileage from this crazy thing that is attached to my head. Um, so for the moment, we're going to do this thing called yes and, which we would normally do in a circle, but we're kind of going to do it in a horseshoe so that you guys can play out to the audience. So you guys know, these guys know what the basic plan is. So yes and is the founding principle of, um, of improv, and we've already kind of done it physically, right? We did it physically by saying, yes, that ball, I would like that ball. Oh, and here, would you also like this ball? Yes, you would also like this ball. Fantastic. So now we're going to use our, our voicey bits, right? Um, and all that this requires is yes. Well, that's it. All you got to do is say yes. Pretty simple. Um, so, what these guys are going to do, somebody is going to point to somebody and do that. The person that they point to, their whole job is just to say yes. So, for example, yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes. Right, so hold on a second. So, all you have to do is the second that somebody points to you is say yes. That's it. You don't have to point yet. So, try it again. Yes. Perfect. Now, what's going to happen is that you're going to pick somebody else in our, in our horseshoe shape. Yes. Fantastic. Now, point to somebody else. Yes! <laughs> uh, great. And now, point to somebody else. Yes. Great. Um, so, let's make a little bit slightly more of a circle. Yep, just slightly. Fantastic, that's totally working. Because now what we're gonna do is show you guys a little bit more of the processing and keeping track of who's doing what and when, right? So now they're not just only going to say and point to the person and, and that person's gonna say yes, they're gonna start with their hands up in the air. That lets everybody know that they haven't been picked yet, right? The second that they go and pick somebody, their arm is down, so then they know that they're not in play anymore, as it were, because they've picked somebody. Um, the next thing that's going to happen is that they're going to do it, but the person who starts first will be the person who gets it from the last person. Does that make sense to complete the circle? So let's do a little practice run. Go. So say yes. Yes. Perfect. Uh, so now hold your arms where they are. Do you guys remember who you picked? Fantastic. Yes? Uh, so do it again. Same exact people. Pick the same exact people. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. 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 Man, that worked out pretty good, didn't it? That was a perfect formation V in the back, right? <laughs> nice. Um, again, because I like, to, I like to make things painful. Um, now, uh, the same people, don't change it up at all. When you point to them and you get your yes, that person's going to start to walk to take your place, much like we just played in tape ball, right? Your job is to figure out, and it's very easy because it's just five of you and you just did this and it's real simple, is you're going to find your person and get your yes to them. You can't move until you get the yes from the next person, right? Because what's going to be happening is if, if you have just, if I've just gotten a yes from you, let's say, I'm going to do this slow motion walk towards you. Because I want to take your place, but I want to give you time to get to your next person without clocking you in the, in the face, right? So, it's slow-mo. Nobody gets hurt, right? Does this make sense? Oh, I know. Later. Pain will happen later. Um, <laughs> so, so, let's try it. Let's try it with a yes and movement. Yes. 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 So, yes. you have to say yes, yeah? <laughs> so incredibly confusing. So freeze, right? So you, you have to, it's so important that you, you're just paying attention to two pieces of information, right? Who you pointed at 
and who pointed at you? Well, that's it. That's all you got to worry about. Um, and things get crazy when movement starts to happen. <laughs> um, let me switch out with you guys. Yeah? A slow mo walk, that's right. The slowest of the slow, the slow mo walks. Nice, nice, nice. So let's try that again, new people. You kind of get the idea, right? So will you start it? Everybody, yeah, everybody hands up in the air. So it goes, again, it goes back to the first person, right? So you're always keeping with the exact same people, the same exact people. Not yet. Does everybody feel like you know what the pattern is? Do you feel good about it? Okay, go. Do it. Where did my folder go? Okay, perfect, awesome, yay! Great, um, let's get everybody back up. Cause I like the pain, I like the pain. And let's go back to our big circle, unfortunately. This, it's just gonna be more painful if it's in a big circle, right? Uh, so now, totally new people, everybody's together, right? Uh, will you start with a yes? So everybody's hands up. You start. Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay, rest your arms for a second. Rest your arms for a second. Oh, or do that. That's cool too. Uh, do it again. Do it again so you learn the pattern. It's okay. Reset. 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 Hands up in the air like you just don't care. Okay. Uh, reset. Go. <laughs> this is the point when the brain explodes. Uh, it's fun to watch, isn't it? It's fun to watch people's brains like... Um, Okay, do you guys feel like you got the pattern? No? Okay, do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. Okay, hands, hands up, hands up in the air, hands up in the air, and just make sure that it's the person the same over and over and over again, same over and over again. Um, like laser focus, remember their faces. Yes, that's the thing that's happening, go! So now the pattern has been yes. formed. They have learned yes. what their theory is. Can they move across the room and figure out how to make it without their brains exploding? Yes. yes. Okay, freeze. So you guys have the pattern, yeah? Yes. yes. <laughs> awesome. Uh, let's try it now with movement. Sure. Now, again, again, it's, it's a slow... It's a slow movement. It's just a slow movement. Don't, where nobody's in a rush. No, it's all cool. So you don't move until they say yes. It's, it's like you have to get permission, right? You have to give me permission to move, otherwise I'm, I can't play, right? So you're waiting for that yes. Are you guys ready? Yes. Go. Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. yes. Looks good, right? Yes. It's like a ballet. Yes. 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 And now it starts to get confusing because people weren't in the expected places, right? People have moved around. So now it's this moment where they're like, where's my person? Where did my person go? When it gets back to Nora, we'll freeze. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay, so freeze. Stay where, uh, oh yeah, yeah, stay, oh yeah, come here. It's totally cool, totally cool. Um, so that was great, yay! <laughs> Nobody died, there were no collisions, life can continue. Um, so now, let's make it more difficult for them. Uh, now they must do the worst dance move that they can possibly do as they cross over. <laughs> Take your time with it. Make it dumb, my darlings. Have fun. Same people, same pattern, don't change anything. I love you guys, I love you. Right, you totally have it. And it can be, it can be the idiot, the idi easiest move, like jazz hands are a good time, um, but don't hurt yourself, so be real gentle. Go! Yes. Also, it gets interesting when the dance moves are not the same every single time. Yes. 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 Oh, wait, what happened? Oh, the... The yes has gone to bed. The sleepy time has happened. Uh, but awesome, yay! Um, so, so part, part of the fun of this is basically not caring how you look, not giving a crap what anybody thinks about you. It's very freeing, right? It's super freeing, especially again, if you're a weirdo introvert who doesn't like people and is incredibly shy and is already sweating like crazy, right? Um, good. Well done. Um, so uh, indulge me a little bit more in this little circular thing and let us do something you would normally not want to do and pass the clap. Pass the clap is basically, it's terrible, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that this has to happen this way. Um, but passing the clap is again, it's about having um, laser focus with the person you're dealing with and you don't even necessarily have to look at what they're doing. If I make really good eye contact with you, <laughs> right? If I make really good eye contact with you and I do this, like, we're going to clap together at the same time, right? Ready? Oh, my God. <laughs> it happened. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this away, and I'm going to do this, and we're going to be like, and then you're going to do that. It naturally gets faster as people get more confident about it. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, so again, agreements. You're expecting it, you're in response to your person, you're just constantly just saying yes. That's all this is, it's just in different ways, right? Because uh, I like to make it, mix it up, I'm gonna send the clap this way. No, wait, we did this way, we went this way. Now we're gonna go this way, ready?
So my job is I'm just waiting for it to come to me. That is all I'm doing. And again, as confidence builds, the speed builds, right? Perfect. Now, because I really like the pain, <laughs> as we've established, I enjoy the pain as much as possible, I'm going to send a round of claps that way and a round of claps that way. What will happen? Uh, what will happen is that somewhere in this area, the odds are pretty good, uh, the odds are pretty good is that someone on that side is going to turn around and then somebody on their other side is also going to be turning around and they're, they're both passing, they're trying to pass it to each other. So what happens is if you happen to turn around and the person's also giving it to you because they've just got it, you double clap and then you turn around and you send it in the other direction. So essentially it's going like this. Right? Does that make sense? Uh, and don't worry, you can't screw it up, right? <laughs> Ready? Okay, so, so yeah, yeah, so, so it felt like it was here. So you guys double clap and send it back around. <laughs> double clap, double clap, just double clap. Perfect. Um, this always happens, it ends up in a fit of giggles and it's fantastic. Uh, and then we do this, yay! Again, like trying to process information is all we're ever doing. That's all we're ever doing. So, uh, you guys have successfully passed the clap. Congratulations. Congratulations, it's good, it's, clap it's clappable. Um, so, let <laughs> so dumb. Uh, all these are dumb, by the way, but perfectly enjoyable, right? They're, they're fun, right? They're fun to watch, right? Um, so, uh, let's make things even more interesting, my friends. Uh, let's, get, uh, let's get half of you guys down. Let's get half of you guys down. It's totally random. There's no, there's no sense in how. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three. Can, one, one more person can sit down for the minute. Running. Running! Yay! So let's have you guys come back out again, right? Uh, and sort of like form another one of those horseshoes, right? So that we leave some room for the audience to watch you guys. Come, come, yep. And then open up a little bit. So yeah, we're always looking at stage picture when we're performing, right? That's what you're going to do in animation, right? Again, this might be awesome, <laughs> but we want to see, we want to see this. So when we're on stage, we tend to cheat three quarter, right? So imagine you have an audience. Right? You kind of want the audience to see you. So as you guys are playing, you definitely are, are sort of paying attention to your people that are on stage, but you're also aware that you know, there are some people who have shown up to watch your butt. <laughs> right? so, uh, so let's do a thing where we, uh, we pass something more than a clap. Let's do a thing where we pass some emotional things around. Right. Um, we are wonderful mimics, aren't we? we? We can look at people from a very young age, and if you smile at a baby, baby tends to smile back. If you do things with, with animals, they tend to try and mimic you, right? So we're, we're fabulous mimics in the grand scheme of things. Um, so we're going to start nice and easy, and we're just going to pass some sound. And it doesn't have to be a, you know, anything big or small. It can be something really easy. Um, so I will stay here with you, yes? Um, and then my, I will pass to you and we'll, we'll go around this way. Does that make sense? Imagine these guys are playing with us. Hello. Uh, no, I, saw, I just saw people like, no, I don't want to play with you. Um, all right, so I'm going to pass just a sound to you. Okay, and that all your job is, is to mimic that sound. Um, you don't have to change it. Did you ever play telephone? Did you guys ever play telephone? So like, with telephone, like it starts at one thing, but when you end up with it, it kind of changes, it morphs naturally in its own magical way. Um, we're not gonna push that. I'll make emotional adjustments when it kind of comes to it, but let me do the work. Uh, you guys, all your job is, is to just mimic the person in front of you. Your temptation, my friends, your temptation is, your turn is about to come up, but this person did something really super interesting. 
doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> Sorry. Um, right now, this is the most important person in the world to you. You want to honor, oh, it's so adorable, you guys. Um, you want to honor your person's offering to you. So do exactly what they do. This is great, but do exactly what the person in front of you has done. Right? Ready? Hey. Perfect. So what I also did was I also gave a little gesture, right? I'm giving it a little bit of character, right? So we're going to do it again. Hey. 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 Ah, did you feel the change? Became a little bit of like, huh? Like a little bit of a question mark. A little bit like a hmm. That's the natural evolution of how it goes. So give me that again. Hey. 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 Perfect. <laughs> so did you guys feel like it kind of everybody was honest to what everybody else was doing? But it's still you, you know what I mean? Like you've got your personality in there and it starts to evolve. So now I'm gonna do some very obvious emotional adjustments that we're gonna get into a bit of character, right? Animation is about emotion, right? Character doing this is about as exciting as, you know, whatever that is. Robots, robots are great though, no problem with robots. But like emotion as a character animator is where you wanna be, right? If you can feel the emotion somewhere and wherever emotion sits in your world. For me, emotion sits right in my diaphragm. So when I am trying to pull up um, like, a, like a hard emotion like sadness, I, these guys know like I can cry on command. Um, and I can cry on command basically because my life's so sad, you guys. No, I, I, can, I can cry on command because if you've had something horrible to happen to you, and I'm so sorry if it has happened to you, you can use it to your advantage at a later point in life. Um, so I tap into the sad moments of my life, and I'm basically like, oh, remember that time, Laura, where that terrible thing happened? Oh, I felt really terrible. And I'll let it sort of bubble in here. Um, so you'll see sometimes when, when, and these guys know it, when I need to get into a sad zone, I can't just, I can't just automatically be like, mm, like, because that's fake. Right? That's not, that's not real. There's nothing real to that at all, right? I have to let it brew and fester in my belly until it's this pit of sadness eating acid erosional into my body it goes away, right? So uh, when I get into those big emotions, I tend to get still and quiet because I gotta find it, right? Happiness is a lot easier to find, right? But usually it's kind of a fake happy, right? It's kind of like a blah. But if you can tap in, if, if you can tap into like a happy emotion that really happened to you, it's gonna make your performance a lot more believable, right? Because we've all had every range of emotion at some point, right? We have. So um, let us start with an emotion. What's give me an emotion? Anybody can throw me an idea for an emotion. Anybody. I heard anger super loud. I heard other things, so shout at me loud because I'm deaf. Anger. Hey. 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 Right? Um, when you use your body into, into stuff, you're getting into animation, right? If I just say, hey, and I'm just angry about it, right? It's not nearly as powerful as when I take my whole entire body, I thrust it forward, I take a step, right? So much more successful when I, and I'm so sorry, I love you. Um, it, it's, it's, it's so much more satisfying for your audience, but it's also really satisfying for your performance, right? Um, let's have another emotion. Give me any. Grief. Grief. Oh. Hey.
Yeah, pass it, pass it, let's play this game. Hey. 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 So hold hold it up so we can hear your sad, sad haze. <laughs> hey. <laughs> it's it's hard hey. not to laugh. <laughs> hey. 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 Emotional tone change. Hey. 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 Sorry, sorry, sorry. Hey. 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 <laughs> hey. 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 <laughs> Isn't that nice? <laughs> Yay! Uh, so, so by really using your body, right, using your voice, using everything that you own, isn't that lovely to watch? More believable, too, than you just going, hey, right, when you are like, I'm going to sit in this feeling for a little while. It feels really good. Awesome. Yay! Next, let's switch out. Switch out, my friends. Switch out, my friends. <laughs> everybody's, everybody's got the hey going on, the hey going on. Oh, whoop. Yay. Uh, so again, let's form our big kind of like thing so people can see us. Nice. That was very nice. Nice. So again, all this is is agreement, using your body, using your mind, feeling all the things that you're feeling, right? Um, so let's do something that is a little bit more physical a little bit more of uh we're, we're doing these kinds of like things but let's give it more of a sentence right you guys ready same idea i'm just going to give you a few more words that's all uh 
You're going to get it. Ready? Um, you did what? You did what? And play to your audience a little bit. Play to your audience a little bit. Yep. You did what? <laughs> you did what? <laughs> you did what? <laughs> Hold your microphone like an inch away from your mouth. You did what? You did what? What? <laughs> you did what? <laughs> you did did what? <laughs> you did what? <laughs> you did what? <laughs> so mimic that. Try and mimic that energy. <laughs> you did what? Mike, be careful of the mic. You did what? <laughs> you did what? <laughs> 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 nice, nice. You did what? <laughs> you did what? You did what? <laughs> <laughs> match it, match it. You did what? <laughs> you did what? <laughs> you did what? <laughs> you did what? I did it. Oh. <laughs> I did it. I did it. I did it. <clears throat> I did it. <laughs> I did it. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. 
exercise. Uh, so, again, you guys used great fun tools. Changing your voice, changing your inflection changes the character, right? We're all the same people that we are, but look at how many different people we just were. Um, so by embracing all, again, all this fun vocal range that you guys have, that's character, right? How do you think voice actors make so much dang money, right? It's because they've got this great tool that they can be many different characters. Using your body to find the attitude is the key to all the awesomeness, right? Totally. Um, let's have you guys switch it up. So, so like three of you go down and three of you come up. Yeah, figure out however that math works out. Here, that's four, five. One, two, three. Do I need one more person? Let me have one more. Fantastic. Um, so we've worked on uh, the joy of our voice. We've used our bodies, right? We've had a little attitude. Um, we're, we're using everything that we have. When we're on stage, though, uh, and when we're in animation, we don't have actual props to work with. Ah. Um, because in improv, it's not staged, right? It's all made up. So it's not like you have a script so you know that I have to have a table and I got to get a chair and I have to have some dishes and a fork and a knife and I got to get a napkin and a glass and it's got to be some beverage and some, there's a tray, blah, 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 blah. I got to have a refrigerator in the corner. Holy crap, right? We don't have any of that when we're improvising. It's all made up, right? So we do this thing in, in theater called space work, which again, is animation. In animation, you're approximating, you know, like if, if I've got to pick up, um, if I have to pick up this bottle, right, um, I know that the bottle is that shape, right? It's that shape. This bottle right now is mostly full, right? So when I go down to reach it, I have to do certain things with my body, right? I have, I'm probably, probably not going to do this move, right? Because, you know, my butt, we like my butt, but, you know, it's <laughs> like, I'm probably going to do a thing where I step into it and I grab it. When I grab something, there's a million different ways to grab something, right? Um, when I grab something, I can grab it from here, I can grab it from here, I can grab it, you know what I mean? But I pretty much know that this thing has a certain shape, size, dimension, whatever it is. So when I put my hand around it, it looks like that. I know it weighs this. So if I do this, I can almost fake it. That's what space work is. So space work is pretending that you got something you don't. But with a familiar object, you know what I mean? When I grab something, I, I don't just go, claw, right? Um, I tend to, like, I'll open my hand and then close around it, right? So there are very specific things. If I wanted to unscrew this, I'm right-handed, so I'm probably going to do it like that, right? Um, when I take a drink, I don't drink like this, glug, glug, because that's just water, <laughs> right? Um, when I take a drink after I unscrew it, uh, it's to my lips, right? Um, I don't have my mouth closed when I'm drinking because otherwise water, blog, 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 right? So there are certain things like, so if you've got a cup or a mug or something, if you're out here, your mouth is not getting anything unless, it's, unless you've figured out that it's a super long one. Um, so for the very first thing, Red ball. We all know what red ball is. Red ball has a certain dimension to it, right? Red ball has a certain texture to it. When I bounce red ball, your first animation exercise is usually a bouncing ball, right? So when you, when you bounce red ball, red ball requires a certain amount of force, and then, da, boof, dies, right? Um, so red ball requires energy to come up. Red ball has weight. So when I throw red ball up in the air, there's a certain amount of time that it takes for me to have red ball come back to my other hand. I'm not doing this, not believable, right? If I do this, my hand will go up and then it catches it, right? So it kind of is like funk and funk. When I bounce it, I tend to scoop under, right? So I let it come up and then I grab it before it goes down again. I, I can grab it when it's at its height, but I tend to grab it under so I don't lose it. So. Take a second and get real familiar with red ball. Feel how red ball feels in your hand so that you feel where your hand wraps around red ball. When I hold red ball, my fingers don't touch, right? Because my hands aren't big enough to get all the way around it. Red ball is squishy. 
um, red ball has a certain weight to it, right? Uh, red ball, again, takes a certain amount of time to go from one hand. If I had red ball and I did this, that's a little bit of magic, right? <laughs> but it's, it's much more believable than me going, no time has elapsed, so I haven't allowed for the movement to happen, right? So as you're passing red ball, you're paying attention to how long it takes you to bounce it, how long it takes to pass from one hand to the other, what it feels like, the texture of it. The more information that you can use from stuff that's from real life, the better you are off, right? Um, so when I'm doing stuff in animation, I try and think of things that I've actually touched or dealt with or worked with, right? Um, to make my life kind of a lot easier. Um, so space work is about maintaining things, too. If red ball suddenly, if I knew that I was holding red ball like this the whole time, and suddenly red ball becomes this, red ball's tiny ball, right? Red ball got squishied, right? So I need to be real good about maintaining what the distance is, right? You feel like you got a good play on red ball? Red ball, please. Um, uh, Red ball? So again, watch your how you're holding it, right? Watch watch the dimension of it. Red oh, red ball. <gasps> that was right in my face. <laughs> Uh, because it also has weight, remember? So when you, when you pass it to somebody, right, you have to... Oh. Will you pass red ball, would you pass red ball here? Oh, you know what? Would you pass red ball there? Oh, <laughs> good catch, good catch, good recovery. Um, uh, fantastic. Will you guys come back up for a second? Yeah. Oh, no. I know, right? So come back into your circle. Come back into your circle. Come back into your circle. Full on circle, 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 circle up. Um, will you pass red ball around? So, so the idea of this is that even though we don't have it, you still feel it, right? still exists, right? Red ball. Red ball. And now again, because I like to make life miserable for everybody, the air is filled with a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff in the air. Um, uh, you guys, I've got green ball. Green ball? Green ball. So they've already done this exercise. They know what it feels like. They know what the balls feel like. It all totally makes sense. Hey, you guys, will you hold on to red and green ball for just a second? I'm sorry. There's, a, there's something in the air. I just have to, I got to, I got to just, hold on a second. Let me just, let me just get that <laughs> air ball. Right. No? Blue ball. Blue ball? Now this looks crazy. <laughs> but this is animation, right? This is just people pretending that they have an action, that they have a thing that they're doing, and making it somewhat believable. Oh my goodness, you guys. Would you, would you hold on to your balls for just a minute? Uh, something, something's happening. I haven't even gotten a paper ball. I need to get like a <laughs> paper ball. Uh, paper ball. I'm gonna walk over to you and hand you paper ball, and you're gonna make contact with somebody and hand them paper ball, and then take their place. So we've already done this exercise, right? It's in your muscle memory. If the movement is in your muscle memory, you can do it, right? 
and they all look delightfully crazy. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, hey, you guys. Hey, you guys. Oh, would you hold on? To, uh, who's got red ball? Can you throw me back red ball? Okay, thanks. Who's got blue ball? Oh, could you throw me blue ball? Oh, okay, hold on. Um, let, let me put that one over here. Who's got uh, green ball? Uh, we we just toss that to me. It's gentle. Oh, okay, let me just uh uh put there. Uh, paper ball. <laughs> oh, awesome. Cool. All right. Let me just all right here. Let me just put that. Oh yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Very good. Yay! Um, uh, it's about it's about illusions, right? It's just about making stuff up. Is anybody ever wrong? No. No, it's lovely, right? It's lovely, you can't fail. You can't fail, you guys, you can't fail. Um, uh, but now I'm gonna make your lives miserable again uh, because I enjoy this whole so much. Um, uh, yeah, let's do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Let's have eight of you sit down and let's just have four of you stay up. Team! Um, you will be team A. Um, one, two, three, four. You guys are team B. Just, just hang out together. Just know, know, in, know in your mind that you are team B, and then you guys are team C. I love, I love the love right happened now. Um, this is a fabulous visual game that, again, is going to get us into our bodies, right? And we are going to uh, entertain you guys, because it's so weird. We're going to do a game called Movie Poster. So, <laughs> Movie Poster is fantastic, let me tell you. Um, what's going to happen is that three of these people are going to take... They're, we're we're going to start with a movie that they are going to agree to, a real movie that actually exists. So the first round is an actual movie that actually exists, right? Um, three of them are going to make the tableau, right? So this is about composition, right? It's about stage picture, and it's about posing. And animation, key poses, key poses, key poses, key poses, key poses, key poses. Key poses, right? Key poses are the strongest bits of the animation. Movie poster are just key poses, right? So, um, I need three people who will make up the poster and one person is going to be the narrator. The narrator is going to tell us the plot of the film, much like we just learned with Francis, right? The important bits of our film, right? They will tell us what the plot is and then they will tell us what the title is. Since this first round is movies that we know, it's going to be real simple. So take a second and you guys, amongst yourselves, pick a film. Pick a film. Um, you guys might want to take a minute and pick your films as well. So, the joy, the joy of this is that you kind of figure out um, what you can do with your body. So nobody's going to do anything that is a weird, weird thing for their body, right? Nobody's going to do anything that hurts. For the people who are making that tableau, you have to, um, you're gonna have to hold your tableau pose for a bit. So come forward a little bit so you're in the light. Um, you're gonna have to um, hold your tableau for a bit. So pick a pose that's, that's pretty good. Um, uh, have you guys picked your film? What's your film? Charlie's, Charlie's Angels. So, uh, iconic. So our, our person who is going to be our presenter is gonna take this magical microphone and they are going to first tell us what the plot is Right? And then they'll tell us what the title of it is. So your job is to not watch. They're in position. Turn around and have a look. Ah, I know this movie. This movie stars three kick-butt women who are, are going out at the, the behest of their, their handler, Charlie, to go about and, and kick butt all over the world. It's called Kick Butt. No, it's called Charlie's Angels. Yay. Awesome. Nice and easy, right? Team B, switch out. Team A, have a seat. Team B, switch out. I need three people who will be my tableau and one person who will be my presenter. Be presenter. presenter. What is your film? Uh, Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla. Of course it is. Of course yeah. it is. Of course it is. Um, so you're going to face away from these guys. They're going to figure it out real quick. But the idea of this is eventually they're not going to talk about what they're going to be doing. They're just going to take the pose, right? 
All right, you guys ready? Pose it out. Pose it out. Pose it out, my friends. Come closer. Come into the light. Come into the light. Come forward. Enjoy your faces. Come into the light. Are you feeling good? So I turn around and I observe. And, and now you turn around. Now you already know what the movie is, so just tell us what the plot is first, mm -hmm. and then tell us that. So go. All right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the, 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 the young nubile princess is stuck between the, the, the war between creatures of flesh and creatures of, of metal and machinery. This is, this is the grand battle of Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla. 2002. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So team, team B and C. <laughs> There's a lot of giggles that happen. Uh, team C, come on up. Come on up, my team C. Who is my presenter? Lovely. What is your film? Jaws. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. So turn away. Turn away for a second. Turn away for a second. Um, give them a chance. So why don't... Why don't you turn out so we, we see you? Yeah, cheat out, cheat out. Come in the light, come in the light, my friends. Come, come forward a hair. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because we're working on stage picture, right? That's all we're working on right now. Um, are you guys feeling it? And go. Uh, a couple. Turn around, of, turn around. Oh, a couple of seafaring men spend way too much time in a boat trying to destroy an, a disgruntled prehistoric shark. And what's the name of this movie again? Jaws. Yay! <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Uh, hey, my team A, come on up again. Team A, now, because I like to make it painful. Uh, team A, you're about to do a movie that does not exist yet. You're going to make up a movie. Uh, Who is going to be my presenter? And now's when the panic ensues, because uh, now like the level of make em ups gets really hard, because you're like, wait, I don't know what this is. This is hard. No, it's somebody different. Somebody different. Some somebody different. Do it. You're you're it. I'm, you're it. Okay. So um, to make it a little bit easier for them, so he, so our presenter will not be looking at what the tableau is. Perfect. Um, can I get a, a film style? Give me a suggestion of a film style. What was yours? Science fiction. We'll do horror next. Science fiction. So your, your uh, genre is science fiction. Spend less time talking it out and more time acting it out. Get your poses ready. Now, our presenter's joy in life right now is he has no idea what's going on behind him. Okay. He's going to turn around. He, the generic reaction of whenever somebody turns around is, oh. Um, because you're like, huh. Um, so what he's going to do is he's going to take the tableau in. He's going to look at it. He's going to try and figure out what's happening. Um, our poster, remember, is a still image. doesn't have to move, so find a comfortable position for you guys. And what he now has to do as the storyteller is justify everything that he sees, right? Um, and he's going to also have to title this film. And again, remember, anything that you say is probably right. Okay. <laughs> right? Ready? Turn around. What do you got? Oh. <laughs> this is a, a, there is a priest who's being preyed on by aliens of another planet. <laughs> uh, who's the, who, so this is our priest, yeah? Yeah, the priest is what's, on the floor. What's our priest's name? Uh, Julie. Priest Julie. Fantastic. <laughs> so Priest Julie is being attacked by aliens. Yes. Fantastic. What planet is this? Uh, Zircon 9. That's, that's right. Um, uh, so what's, what's the title of this film? Religion in Space. That's right. Yay! Uh, switch out. Switch out. Team B. Team B. Team B. Who is my presenter? Fantastic. Uh, same game. Our three fabulous actors will find out a tableau, but first let us give them a genre. What was the horror, was it, right? Um, so your, th your genre is horror. Uh, let's talk, just kind of find a good pose and how you fit in with each other. <laughs> okay. So again, uh, the idea is, is that we will, uh, we're going to come up with our plot, 
our plot, our fabulous plot that we're going to justify the heck out. Okay. <laughs> All right. And uh, and we're going to come up with a title. Okay. Go. You ready? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> um. So this summer. Oh no, sorry. This winter actually. <laughs> This winter, uh, there's this a, a new demon in town. <laughs> His name. <laughs> um. Oh gosh. <laughs> is um. <laughs> okay, so it's about this guy, this uh, soldier. Soldier. Yeah. Right. This soldier. His name is. Uh, Gary. Gary. Soldier Gary. Soldier, Soldier Gary, Gary. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And he has. Um, he's alone. His his battalion's been slaughtered by the demon uh, Double Helix. Right. Infin <laughs> Infinity <laughs> Zircon right. Fifty Thirty Three. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, oh man. Yeah. Uh, and and what's gonna happen? And um, so the demon's unkillable. He just has to get off of um, this uh, out of the underworld and make it back to Earth because the demons can't follow him there. Fantastic. What is the name of this film? I forgot. Escape from Hell. Yay! <laughs> Fantastic. Team C. Team C, come on up. So the reason why this is fun and it works is because everybody's just saying yes, right? You're just saying yes to everything that's presented to you, and you're just like, I'm good. I'm making it up. It's all fantastic. Um, can we have another genre? Romance. Uh, again, a pose that you can hold for like two. Yeah, all right. Uh, uh, so again, your your job is our plot based on what you see, and eventually the title. Try and name people. Give us a location. Things that are fun like that. Okay. Go. Oh my goodness, so here we have Fabio, Priscilla, and Lisa. Lisa and Priscilla are both lovers from outer space. Fabio is the long lost soldier who we've forgotten about, and it's actually Lisa's ex-boyfriend, but she turned lesbian for uh, Priscilla. So this summer there is, I'm sad because my girlfriend left me. Yay! Awesome. Awesome. Ridiculous. We get on time? Five minutes. Um, oh my goodness, that was ridiculous, wasn't it? Um, can I make it worse for them? Yeah, I can. Uh, can I have, um, randomly, let me have four people up. And now I'm going to have two presenters. Uh, do we have another one of these anywhere laying around, maybe? Is there another microphone? Ah, perfect. Working, working, working. Fantastic. Um, uh, so who, so I need two people up to be, so, so you guys are going to be my tableau. Uh, you know what, let me have one more person to help up with the tableau. Let me have five people up for tableau. And I've got two presenters here. Fantastic. <laughs> now these two people are going to build the story together. Aha, brains working one, nom, 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 nom. Right? So this means that they have to be in agreement. When somebody says something, it's yes. That is absolutely right. When the other person says it, it's like, yep, I embrace your idea Hell wholeheartedly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you're, you're into it. May we have a genre for these guys? Spaghetti Western. Spaghetti, Spaghetti Western. Western. <laughs> Fantastic. So don't talk about it. Get into a pose. Spaghetti Western, do it. Uh-huh. Does it look good? You guys can all hold that pose? Oh, God. Oh, my God. <laughs> what happened? Oh, that's so much better. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so now, again, hold on, hold on. So now your job, you're going to share it. You're going to share the idea. You're going to okay. share the idea. Uh, ready? And go get surprised. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so Lisa over here with the Death Star shirt, yes, is battling uh, Jemima. Jemima and uh, Papa Pizzoli is just an innocent um, pasta chef. Yes, Papa Pizzoli. Trying to make some good pasta. See, Jeremy over here killed him with uh, cracked pepper in the restaurant. He's an going into anaphylactic shock. And, yes. Uh, what's her name is about Jemima. to revive him, but she also has a crush on him, so she's about to go like full mouth to mouth on this guy. <laughs> oh yes, 100%. My and uh, uh, Barbara over here is just a stay at home housewife who got stuck in the mix. Oh my god. Um, what's the name of this film? 
Pasta Bing Bing. Pasta Bing Bing. <laughs> Pasta Bing Bing. Um, awesome, awesome. Now, hold on, hold on. How can I make this worse? Bring on uh, the pain. Huh? Bring on the pain. Bring on the pain. Um, now, based on what these guys just said, you have to come up with the, the big moment of the film, the, 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 the height of the film, the, the, the big special explode, whatever it is, the, the final battle, the big final big scene, based on all the stuff that they just said. So you guys are not going to look. Uh, you guys come up with a new pose based on the information that they said, and now you guys have to justify how it ends. You're going to have to justify your film, how it ends, based on what you see here. Uh, and remember, cheat out to audience, cheat out to our audience, right? Right? <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, uh, are you guys, you, you all ready? You all ready? Great, and go! Oh, okay, so he's in the middle of anaphylactic shock. He's dumping more pepper onto his Pasta face. Pasta is just really randy with the sauce. Jemima, heartbroken, heartbroken Jemima. Uh, her true love is uh, dying to anaphylactic shock. <laughs> Barbara, our homemaker, <laughs> is assisting at the death. Lisa's torn because she's also found out that she loves him too, but also <laughs> their brother and sister. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's awesome, yay! Great. Uh, we'll do one last one, one last one with everybody. Let's get everybody up, everybody up. Uh, and I need uh, two presenters who haven't done it for a bit. Who, who, else, have, who else wants to present? Oh, yes. Um, a little more difficult because we have everybody, but this is going to be epic. This will be epic. Uh, so remember to keep in the light, keep in the light, my friends. Uh, so may I have a suggestion for this giant ensemble cast? Oh, yeah. Uh, so we are in, our genre is creepy Japanese anime. Anime? Um, so you are all now one collective brain. How do you get your one collective brain to make a beautiful, uh oh, a beautiful picture that you can hold for a while? Oh my goodness, we'll speed this up, we'll speed this up. So get into, get in, figure out how you fit in. Get in, get in, everybody get visible. Fantastic. Again, my job for my two presenters is you are going to look at this and make up the best story you've ever told. Here it is. Are you guys ready? Yes. Go. Awesome. I love this one. What's this one? What's uh, so uh, little monsters invade a town and buy giant robots and uh, <laughs> they all die. Uh, yeah, but does it, this, this one, when, it, when, it, when this one dies, it actually comes back with wings. That one's so cool. And that one on the back that's like humping her leg is like a dog girl. I love dog girls. Um, so what's the plot, you guys? What's the plot? Well, they're attacking. They, they want to get out of the tiny little box that they were put in by the bad people 10,000 years ago. Oh, who, so, what was their name, the 10,000 years ago people? Um, Susan. Susan. And so <laughs> Susan from 10,000 years ago. Susan was a bad man. Susan was a bad man. Bad man. Bad man. Susan was a so bad he man. Took all the cute monsters and he gathered them together and he shoved them in the box. Terrible, terrible. terrible um, and so, so what is this moment again? What is this moment? I mean, like, what this is... This is the epic battle when they get together in the city of Tokyo and they just destroy everything and everybody because they can't find enough food. Because they're not good at telling humans apart. All humans look the same to them, so we're all Susan. Yes, awesome. Uh, what's the name of this film? Super Hentai Senpai. <laughs> yes, awesome, yay! Uh, are we good? 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 Uh, I, we're gonna keep, we're gonna keep going, but do you want to have a moment? You know what happened? We got five more minutes of film. So you know what that means? We gotta see the epic moment. So right? You gotta tell me how the story ends. So you guys, so we had that based on all this that happened. Now come up with a totally new tableau. Be gentle on each other. Uh, and this is the final epic end of the scene. You, your idea here, you're punking those guys. Make it as difficult as possible. Go, make some, make some crazy, crazy tableau. 
And you're in agreement, right? Again, character poses, animation is about beautiful key poses. Animation is about agreement. Um, let's, make, let's make a little bit more height here, right? There's a lot of people laying down, so let's get you guys to be more of a, of a beautiful picture. Beautiful picture. Imagine that this is the best drawing, right? <laughs> This is, the, this is the epic, this is the epic poster that people are going to come and see this film for, right? Will you, will, you, will you stand up a little bit so we see you a little bit more? A little bit more seeing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, will you, will you come, come up and interact with this person a little bit more? Yeah, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you guys feel good? Do you guys feel good? Okay, uh, I don't know what has just happened. It's got to have control, you guys. I don't know. Yeah, this is the last moment of this film. Like, it's, I, you're going to have to explain it. You're going to have to explain it to everybody. Okay, just explain it to everybody. You got it? You got, got it? it? Go! Oh! <laughs> Susan has returned to Earth. <laughs> and Susan has cursed half of them to think that the other half is also Susan. <laughs> so it's a battle of Susan. Also, they're merging with Susan. Oh, they were going to be a, a Susan, like a blob of Susan. So you're saying that everything becomes Susan? It's like a gray Susan scenario? It's just a Susan world. A Susan world. Okay, uh, what, what is happening here? Oh, I think... Susan found her shoe. Oh, does Susan feel good about finding her shoe? No, it's trying to oh, get wait, it Susan's off. It's too small. Man, I'm sorry. Too small. Too small. Susan, Susan has merged with other things, so Mer Susan can be whatever Susan wants to oh be. Oh my God! What it's has like a Susan Susanception. What has so so what what has Susan merged with? Downtown. 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 This is actually a Starbucks. That's a Starbucks. a Starbucks. That is a Starbucks. So Susan has merged with downtown Starbucks and, Tokyo. And yep. this is the only human left that isn't either a tiny cute monster, a hentai simp. Or, or a Susan. This is the only human. He has to be protected, but he's the only one. Oh, man. His name is Rick. 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 Oh, my God. Not Rick. that Rick. Rick, I got to ask, what's happening here? Uh, that monster has a thing for pulling its own hair. <laughs> yeah. It gives it more power. It yanks its hair like a starter on a, on a lawnmower. It goes, yada, da, 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 da. Right. And that gets it to... to to murder that Susan. Um, if, if, go ahead, say something. If my poster, if my poster was going to say something, what would my poster say? What would it say? Don't watch this movie. <laughs> no, no. What would my poster say? My poster can now talk. <laughs> Susan. Please kill me now. Susan. Uh, Susan. Okay. Bye. Awesome. Yay! Fantastic. Uh, so, what have we gathered from what have we gathered from this? I have no idea. Um, so, what have we learned? Uh, have a seat, you guys. So, uh, we have learned the following things. One, uh, improv is super healthy for you, right? Uh, improv lets you uh, be anybody that you want to be, uh, which is what animation is. Animators can be anybody that they want to be, right? Uh, you can embody anything. You could be a character that is not you at all whatsoever. Your character can be any age. It can be any race, religion, sex, sexless. It can be animated animal, mineral, vegetable, object, right? So when we are animating, we are using all the tools that we have in our toolbox, our body, our voice, um, and when we're making our animation work, it's because we're making these beautiful, strong choices, great key poses, right? Everything that makes, uh, makes you want to say, tell me more about Susan's, <laughs> right? Um, and storytelling. So back to where Francis, where we started, right, everything is connected. It might sound like it's a load of crap, right, but when you justify it and everybody agrees to it, it's a story. And we are all storytellers, right? So any idea that you have can be a great story. Any idea that you have that can be a great story can be a great animation. Any idea that you have can be a great character design. It can be a great model. It can be a great environment. It can be a great pop, right? Prop, 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 right? So everything that I do on stage as an as a actor translates to everything that I do on stage as an animator. Um, I, I've had a, a ridiculous amount of fun with you guys. Have you had fun? Um, did you guys have fun? 
Ridiculous. Uh, would, would you guys ever want to do improv? You would, right? Why would you want to do improv? So fun. And it's really healthy for you, right? Um, did these guys, are these guys professional actors? No. They're just like you guys, right? So that means anybody can do it, right? Um, I highly suggest if you ever get a chance to take an improv class if you're an animator. Um, it will really help you to think about things from beginning to end. As an animator, I'm thinking about not just the scene that I'm animating, I'm thinking about what's going to happen next. And it's just story. It's just throughput and story. Uh, awesome. Yeah, so I think we have a little bit more time, but we're going to go offline. So let me, you guys hold there. You do bit magic here. I'm going to give you this. Yeah. Are these not on? Sorry. Okay. Wrong. Let's have a round of applause for everybody, please. <laughs> that was amazing. And we're going to play all the footage on, like, your graduation days. So <laughs> get ready for that. Um, yeah. Thank, thank you so much, Laura. Does, is anyone here um, looking to stay and do some improv classes without the cameras? Do you want to raise your hands if... Yeah, That's we're, we're going to stay for a little bit. If you, if okay. you and the audience want to play, we're all going to cool. play. Cool. Awesome. awesome. Okay, so, right, I'll just kind of, like, wrap up, and we'll choose uh, winners of tonight's raffle, and then those who don't want to stay can leave, and the rest of you can kind of join the fun. So, um, and before we do that, I just want to mention some upcoming events. So they're not yet on the website, so you guys are the first to know. So Marvel Studios is going to be back here on October 14th. So it's a Saturday night. Um, it'll be the, the art department from Marvel Studios. So we'll be talking about Spider-Man Homecoming. So some really cool stuff. Uh, make sure you come to that. Uh, we won't be live streaming that one, so you will have to be here to see it. Um, and of course, Pixelogic will be hosting its annual takeover of the Noman School campus from October 6th to October 8th. So lots of free presentations, gallery show, loads of fun. So make sure you register at summit.pixelogic.com. And then on October 20th, we'll be bringing the amazing Vitaly Bolgorov to Noman uh, for a moderated discussion. And he'll have a gallery show um, over on the north side too. So please add these to your diaries and come check them out. Um, and everyone tonight, uh, you can actually rewatch tonight's events on live stream at livestream.com forward slash um, And there's also a bunch more events on there that we've done over the last few years that you can check out. Um, and if anyone is sticking around, doesn't want to take part, but they want to go tour the campus, we can do that with you too. So I'm going to hand over to Courtney, who's going to draw the winners of tonight's raffle. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm going to announce our online winner first. So our winner um, from Twitter is Noah Henderson. Congratulations, Noah. That's Yay. That is Instagram, I'm sorry, Twitter handle Noah Introduction. So Noah, if you could please send us an email um, at events at noman.edu. That's events with an S at noman.edu. We can hook you up with your prize tomorrow. All right, so we have some pretty awesome goodies here. All right. So our first prize is with the amazing Laura, who has kindly agreed to do a one-on-one -on -one portfolio review on Skype or on Google, um, something like that. You guys can decide what works best for you. We'll get you connected. So. Our first winner, everyone get their tickets out, is 027841. Excellent. Yes. Let me just check your number real quick, and then, yeah, we can just meet up afterward, and I will connect you with Laura. Excellent. Thank you so much. Yep, just come see us over at the side, and we'll get you guys connected. All right, so we have some... Let's see, let's do some books from Francis. Okay, so Francis is so kind to give us some copies of books that he's authored, and he's also autographed them for us. So, um, the first one is Iggy's Incredibly Easy Way to Write a Story. So this is an awesome visual way to see your story structure. And our winner is 027817. Awesome. 
Come on up. Thank you, 817, here you go, enjoy, congratulations. All right, our next winner is for the little mouse who really wanted to do something big. It's a storybook coloring how-to by Francis. And we're going to get 027855, no, 855. Okay, how about 027865? 865? Okay. <laughs> and we have 828. 027828. Yay! Congratulations. Thank you. 828. Excellent. Congrats. Enjoy. All right, and our next book is Directing the Story, also by Francis. It's a beautiful book. And so, 027824. Do we have an 824? Okay. How about 830? Zero. Zero. Excellent. Thank you. Oh, enjoy. Now we also have some awesome little posters here that Francis also signed. So we have a few of these we're gonna give out too that go along with his talk today. So our first one is 858, 027-858. 027831 831 uh 863 sorry let me it's already gone into 858 was a winner yes come on up excellent oh Thank you. There you go. I'll take that. Thanks so much. <laughs> All right. Um, that was 867. 027867. No? 027843. 843. Yes. Come on up. Yay. <laughs> Congratulations, thank you. All right, let me see, I have two, two more. Okay, <laughs> sorry, this is a long one, guys. Uh, 856, 856. All right, we have 027846, 851. Excellent. Congratulations. Thanks very much. And uh, 820. Excellent. Thank you. All right, that's it for tonight's prizes, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.